Hey guys, today I'm going to give you a brief introduction into Linux. So you might be asking yourself, well, what is Linux? Well, Linux is a powerful operating system, a lot like Windows and Mac OS. And if you look at the desktop screenshot that I have here, you see that there are shortcuts, the widgets are on the right side, and some quick links are on the bottom there. So all stuff that you should be pretty familiar with if you use today's modern operating systems. So what is Linux? Well, Linux is an open source operating system which uses the GNU general public license, which means that the source code is freely available even if altered by the community. Um, so if you request the source code, you should be able to get a copy of it. And the source code, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's it's the base code for how the operating system communicates with hardware and the user. The source code is basically the, the heart of the operating system. And Linux was developed and is continuing to be supported by the community of thousands of people. If you compare this to Windows or Mac OS, um, Linux has a lot more developers and people committed to improving and patching the security holes in the operating system. So the operating system is often free, but if you want commercial applications or professional support, that may cost you money. But that's nothing unique to Linux, that's the same thing with Mac OS and Windows. Um, Linux uses many free applications like Firefox, GIMP, OpenOffice, or in some cases LibreOffice, which are very similar, as well as others. Linux can run many traditional games, and many games from the Steam market too, which is great news if you're a gamer. Common uses of Linux? Internet servers. If they, uh, the internet server, if it's running Linux, can be installed with a combination of Apache, MySQL, and PHP to run a website. Of course, those aren't all needed to run a web page. Um, file and print servers, and I use Samba as an example because it's the most common way to turn Linux into a file and uh, a file and print server. Application servers such as SQL databases can be run on Linux. Supercomputers, which are interconnected computers linked together, um, sharing basically the workload that one computer would normally do. And most supercomputers are actually running the Linux operating system, believe it or not. Scientific workstations. If you want to learn more about Linux scientific workstations, um, Google Scientific Linux, um, abbreviated SL, to learn more about that. And of course, office and personal workstations are growing in popularity every day. So who uses Linux? Well, unfortunately, not that many people use Linux. But hopefully that will change in the future, because I want to talk a little bit about the Windows market. As you can see, they have about 87% of the world market. Well, take about roughly two-thirds of Windows market and that's credited to Windows XP. So I don't know if you're familiar with Windows XP but in 2014 Windows is dropping or Microsoft is dropping Windows XP and it's no longer going to be updated or supported. So people on the older, oper the older Windows operating system are going to have to move to either a newer version of Windows or choose another operating system and hopefully people will see the benefits of using a Linux operating system and make the jump. So the majority of websites you visit are actually run on a Linux server. I believe it's just over 70 percent of the server of the web servers out there. Businesses can install Samba, as I mentioned earlier, on a Linux computer for authentication. What that means is they can mimic the Active Directory implement implementation that Windows servers offer. And also, you can just do 
file shares with Samba to other workstations such as Windows, Linux, or Mac. And more and more home users are running desktop Linux, including myself. I'm a huge supporter of it. So let's look at the growing popularity of Linux. As you can see in 1991, 7.5 million. And now just a couple of years ago, 40 million users were estimated to be using the Linux operating system. So what are the advantages? Risk reduction, less viruses and malware. Because if I'm a hacker and I'm or, or I'm trying to, you know, write a malicious code and release it on the internet, um, I'm going to go after that 87% Windows share of the world market. Uh, why would I go after 1% of the computers? It would just be a waste of time. So that's why Windows is attacked more. Not because, well, I guess you could say Windows has a lot of flaws, but the main reason is because it's getting hammered and attacked so often because it is the most popular operating system. So, of course, Linux is going to be more secure just by default, but it also has to do with the fact that the community does a great job of staying on top of any bugs, weaknesses, or vulnerabilities in the operating system. Um, meeting business needs, of course, we talked about servers and desktops running Linux. Stability and security. Most people don't know this, but Linux is an operating system that's designed to be left on and left on for a long time. So it's really great for running uh, servers. I say in my example that it can run for months, but it can actually run for several months before it needs to even be restarted. Um, Linux operates on most hardware. PCs. Most of your routers are probably running some version of Linux. Um, Android is a variation of Linux. And of course we have the new Ubuntu Linux phones coming out, which is going to be really cool. Um, ease of customization, of course, just like you're used to in any operating system. You can customize your shortcuts and icons and the look and feel. Ease of obtaining support. There's, as I mentioned, a huge community. The cost of the operating system, I have free with asterisks around it because most Linux distros are free. There's a few that you might have to pay for. But the highest cost in owning a Linux um, server or system would be the personnel hired to maintain it if you're a business. So I just have a few um, Linux distributions uh, for my example. I have these three and then I've got these four. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail talking about the different distros. You can just look at um, this video and read some of my notes here. But I do want to point out too that Ubuntu is actually probably one of the easiest to get into if you're a newbie and you're just looking to try out Linux. And so with that, I'm going to show you what Ubuntu looks like. I'm just going to log in. And as you can see, it looks a lot like um, operating system that you're used to. Um, the menu is over here, and maybe you're used to your menu being on the bottom if you're using a Windows computer. But don't fret, it's all, it's all here, including your applications. See, your, your mail application, Firefox, your browser, and here's your Office Suite, which would be the equivalent of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint. And I do want to point out that if you go to the Ubuntu Software Center, you can download games, apps, um, fonts. I mean, there's so many different things you can download. For, and, and it's kind of like the Android market, only for your Linux desktop. So you have a combination of free and very inexpensive applications that you can download for your system. But anyway, I, I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys have any questions or comments you want to make, feel free to do so. And thanks for watching.